In this video, I'll be bringing you guys along as I quickly put together a gaming setup with a unique 240 hertz OLED ultra wide monitor. So this is a gaming monitor and gaming on an ultra wide increases immersiveness and allows a player to see more on the screen while playing. I found that it's perfect for car racing and story driven games as long as they support ultra wide resolutions and even competitive games, especially this one with its high refresh rate and super low response time. Anyway, let's go ahead and see this setup come together piece by piece and then I'll go over each piece that makes up the setup briefly to kind of explain how it all works out. All right, so we're going to start things off by adding the desk arm, which is going to hold up the monitor. You can either mount this to your desktop using the grame or using the desk clamp. So I decided to go with the desk clamp because this desk does not have any grame holes. All right, so that's it for the desk arm. Now we've got the Ultra Gear 45 inch monitor. The monitor comes with its own desk stand, but I'm gonna be mounting it onto the Vivo arm there and then connecting all the different cables. So we've got power and then we've got display port. It's also got some pretty nice cable pathways, which I'm going to be using to the max because I cannot stand cables being all over the place. So after getting the monitor mounted onto the arm and getting all that set up, all that's left now is to add the PC as well as all the peripherals that will get the setup up and running. The first thing I like to do with new monitor setups like this one is make sure that I've got the refresh rate set right as well as resolution and all of that. And that's what I did first with this setup. Made sure it was set to 240 hertz and I got the maximum resolution of 3440 by 1440p. So at the center we've got the monitor which is from LG's Ultra Gear line of gaming monitors and it's also the first of its kind. It's got a 45 inch curved screen with a maximum 1440p resolution and comes equipped with an OLED panel with a maximum refresh rate of 240 hertz. It's also got a super low response time of 0.03 milliseconds GTG. Because the monitor uses an OLED panel, it's also lightweight and sporting a paper thin profile with the exception of a small section on the rear holding all those I.O. ports. The monitor also has some pretty great features which you'd expect from gaming monitors of this caliber and this price. I'm talking about features like G-Sync and FreeSync compatibility as well as others. With or without HDR turned on, colors look great. I'm talking vibrant and amazing on this thing. Blacks look rich and contrast is great as you'd expect from anything sporting an OLED display. Gaming on an ultra wide is great, but only if the game you're playing supports that resolution or you're going to have some really large black borders on both sides of the screen. The high refresh rate of 240 hertz isn't going to be useful to most people, but it definitely makes gameplay buttery smooth on the monitor. I do know that there's a point of diminishing returns when it comes to how much your eyes can see when it comes to the refresh rate, but I think it's pretty good that you're even able to get that much out of this. And when you couple that with the 0.03 low response time, this thing becomes a powerhouse for FPS and competitive esports gaming. So if you're into that, you might want to check out this monitor. I've also found that playing story driven games on this is awesome. I'm talking, you see so much more on the screen, but then again, that's only if the game supports ultra wide resolutions and not every game supports it. This is not a full review of the monitor by any means, but let me know down in the comment section if you guys want to see a video on that. 
Holding up the monitor, I've got a heavy duty desk arm from Vivo, which has a weight capacity of about 33 pounds and supports ultra wide monitors up to 49 inches. It's made from aluminum and has to be one of the most sturdy and capable desk arms I've used so far. It's got a wide range of motion for tilt, swivel, and rotation. Something really cool about this arm that I usually don't see with most is the pneumatic spring arm, which allows for perfect weight adjustments and for the monitor to be raised pretty high. It's definitely not cheap, but it's very solid and great at what it was built for. And you're not going to find a lot of arms that can hold up to 49 inches ultra wide monitors. The gaming PC I've got there powering the setup is one I built primarily for gaming. It's got an RTX 4090 GPU and Intel's 13th gen i9 CPU. And these both combine to form a gaming powerhouse. Besides those, I've got 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and three terabytes of NVMe SSD installed into it as well. I use the combo of water and fan cooling to keep temperatures low in the system. And of course, I've got RGB lights installed in there as well. I've got the entire system built inside the Lian Li Lanku 3 PC case, which looks great. I haven't found a single game that the PC cannot handle at its maximum settings. Pushing games at 240 hertz at the maximum 1440p resolution on the ultra wide is definitely not an issue and it does that flawlessly. The Nvidia GPU also means the PC can be used together with the G-Sync compatibility on the monitor to reduce tearing and whatnot. This would also work for AMD GPUs and the monitor's FreeSync compatibility. The gaming keyboard and mouse is a combo of the Logitech G915 and G Pro X Superlight. The G915 is from Logitech's gaming line and it's the 10 keyless version meaning no number pad making it a lot more compact and minimal. It's also got some pretty cool backlighting and can be fully customized using Logitech's G Cloud Gaming software. I've got it connected to the PC through a USB dongle, but it's also got Bluetooth and wired modes as well. The G Pro X remains the lightest mouse I've ever used, whether it's for gaming or anything else. It's super minimal with only two extra buttons besides the main left and right ones, and those are fully programmable using the same G Cloud software. I've also got it hooked up to the PC through a USB dongle using Logitech's Lightspeed Tech, and this makes latency pretty much non-existent. The G Pro X is also from Logitech's gaming line, so when combined with the G915, they work great for gaming and pretty much anything else. There's an all-white Xbox controller sitting on a Razer fast charging stand at the top of the desk mat. This one is for games which I'd rather play with a controller than with a keyboard and mouse combo. The controller comes with a dongle which works great and I found it to be more stable than Bluetooth connections. The wireless charging dock is a fast charger and was designed specifically for Xbox wireless controllers. For me, it's the minimal design and how easily it fits into any setup without taking up a lot of space while still maintaining a clean look. I also love that it blends in really nicely with the controller. The keyboard, the mouse, and the controller are all sitting on a large handcrafted desk mat from Harbor London. It's got two sides to it with one side made from full grain leather and the other side from 100% wool felt. It's got a small cutout as well for passing a single cable through whether that's for charging the keyboard and mouse or anything else at all. The quality of it feels pretty solid and it works great for what it's meant for. I got the extra large version in bright orange and it measures about 31 inches by 17 inches. To add some backlight into the desk, I've got the GoV AI sync box set up. And there's a lot more to these lights than I'll be going over here as they're not the main focus of the setup. In fact, I've only got them there to add some dynamic and colorful light into the space. The kit comes with these two light bars and a light strip, but I've only got the light bars on the desk since the monitor also has some backlight in which works great in my opinion. The light bar is connected to the sync box and you can set up various scenes and more from within the GoV app on phone. The headset I've got there at the desk is the HS80 from Corsair. It comes with a mic which can easily be tucked away when you're not using it. It connects wirelessly through a USB type A dongle which I've got connected directly to the PC. I've used these for a while now and never had any issues with comfort or battery life even when playing with them for long sessions. I'm sure there's probably better headsets out there but the HS80 works great for what it is. I've got the headset sitting on a plastic desk mount with a hanger that can be pulled outward to expose the headset when needed and pushed inward to hide it away when no longer needed. It's super minimal and saves desk space while keeping the headset nicely tucked away. I put the desk together from two different parts, a sit stand electric base and a 55 by 23 inch tabletop. The base is from Motion Gray and the top is called Lag Captain from Ikea. The base is electric and can be raised up and down using the controller on the far right. 
but I don't plan on doing very much of that while gaming, but for some other purposes like productivity, for example, it'll be great. The desktop is made from MDF. It's pretty thick and has a very sharp rectangular shape. There's an Alex drawer right next to the desk. And this one is there for two main reasons. First is to keep the PC off the carpet. And second is for adding storage to the desk area. And honestly, it does a pretty great job at doing both. If you've been wondering about the large plants on the far left of the desk, that's a seven feet tall artificial plant from Artiplanto, which is pretty much there just to add some greenery and to improve aesthetics at the desk area. And I think it does pretty well at doing that. That's pretty much everything that makes up the desk setup, but honestly, not much else is needed to enjoy gaming here. The monitor and PC combo alone is pretty solid. Links to everything I used in putting this together can be found down in the description below. Also, let me know down in the comment section what you guys think about using an ultra wide for gaming and what game you'd play first at this desk setup. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you all in my next one. As you know, it's Tommy, and I'm out, y'all.